Joining us now for more is Intercontinental Hotels Group America CEO Ellie Malouf. Ellie, thanks for joining us. You oversee more than 4,300 hotels, and I believe most are open. What is occupancy like? Thank you for having me with you today. I'm uh, actually joining you from the Hotel Indigo, right on the banks of the Potomac River, right outside of Washington, D.C. It's great to be with our teams here in this hotel that's open and beginning to rebuild the business. Uh, we have over 93% of our, over 97% of our hotels open in the Americas. And uh, you can look at the recovery since the drops in uh, March and in April in a few phases. Of course, in March and April, we bottomed out in the industry at about 20% uh, in occupancy and even less across the industry in major urban areas. Then over the summer, you've seen a recovery driven by leisure, drive-to business, and some essential business. And as we get to, to the fall, we're into the second phase. And we hope to see the recovery from essential business travel, uh, from some of the sectors like transportation, uh, construction, medical, technology, entertainment, that are doing a little bit better during this economic crisis. Uh, so we hope to see that during this uh, segment of the recovery. Uh, our business that's heavily focused in mainstream brands like Holiday Inn, Holiday Inn Express, our extended stay brands, is well positioned against these drive-to markets against these industries that have been doing well. And so while the industry dropped quite a bit, obviously it's been a, a pretty rough year for hotel for hotel businesses. We dropped mm -hmm. a little bit less than the industry. We're recovering a little bit better. And that's really because of our strategy being concentrated in mainstream brands and franchise uh, business across all 50 states and drive to markets. How tied to your business and your recovery is airline travel? In other words, we've seen more people taking road trips. How, how much yeah. can you get back to full capacity until we get some sort of boom in travel, which still remains very depressed? Look, ultimately, to get to a full recovery in the industry, you're going to need to see medical solutions, treatments, and vaccines, which we're hoping to see starting to progress by the end of this year and getting to broad distribution next year, and that will allow the large conventions and international travel to occur. But already you're seeing domestic travel occur in countries where the vaccine gets contained. So if you look at Asia, uh, in China in particular, where we have a very big business at ISG, as the virus got contained, domestic air travel started to grow, and we're now into single digits as an industry uh, down to last year in terms of demand. And I think you're starting to see some recovery in domestic air travel in the United States. The intercontinental travel will take some time. Uh, it will take also the medical solutions to arrive. But we're a little less tied to that air travel. We're distributed mostly in drive-to markets. Over 84% of our rooms in the United States are in mainstream brands like Holiday and Holiday and Express and our extended stay brands. Yeah. Uh, so we're not as indexed to the air travel as we are to the driving travel. So, Ellie, I, I wonder if we're, we're seeing the return of the road trip, in a sense, not that it ever went away, but versus air travel. And if you think, based on the patterns you tend to see in travel, if people who maybe could afford to fly in in the past would have flown somewhere are now driving, if they're more likely to continue that behavior even beyond the period post-pandemic when they have to. You know, John, I think you'll see both. I think uh, the American public, um, they have been road trippers forever. You know, at the heart of the Holiday Inn brand was Kevin Wilson's uh, desire to build Holiday Inn hotels for people's road trips. And that continues. But people love to travel to more distant destinations uh, and to get on planes. And I am confident that when there are medical solutions that arrive, and hopefully soon you'll see people get on planes to get to the more remote destinations uh, and explore. Uh, you know, the fundamentals of this industry are still very strong, and they're really driven by the growth of the middle class and the growth of GDP around the world. And when people achieve a level of well-being, they really want to travel and explore and expand. And I don't think that's fundamentally changed. In fact, what we've seen during this pandemic is, while everybody's been locked down for six months, their desire to travel has not gone away. It's just been suppressed and restricted by travel restrictions. But as those lift, we see people want to go back and travel. So I don't think that you're going to see a shift from one mode of travel to another. I think you're going to see both grow again after we get across this pandemic.